Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas. Our men's group study in the Church Dogmatics by Karl Barth. Section 4, the Doctrine of Reconciliation. We are in paragraph 62, the discussion of the uh, gathering of the community or the gathering of the church by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Professor Bart will close out paragraph 62 with a discussion of the apostolic authority of the church. The apostolic authority of the church and the way that the church exists within this apostolic authority, which is mediated to the church through the authority of Scripture. If you look at block one, we're going to take a look at the, the apostolic church. There are seven aspects of apostolic authority. It can only be perceived, it can only be known in faith. It's based on the concrete criterion of Scripture. It is the normative instruction of the apostles for the church, and it means being put into an eschatological movement by the scriptures toward the eschaton of God's kingdom through the apostolic teaching. It is the absolute negation of the notion of legalistic apostolic succession. The notion of apostolic succession by the Catholic Church should be negated, says Bart. It is not that is an improper interpretation of the authority of the apostolic church. We need to negate the idea of apostolic succession. The apostles bear the keys of the kingdom. They do mediate the rhema voice of Christ to the church through scripture. And their apostolic teachings complement the incarnate dox glory of the spirit which dwells within the church. So Bart says that in a, in a metaphorical way, we can uh, view the church as situated in the school of the apostles, where the members learn the meaning of obedience, and the apostolic history finds its completion in the eschatological community headed toward and being impelled toward the eschaton of God's kingdom. So if we take a look at block two, we can take a look at this uh, scripture, the authority of scripture, which gives us the teaching of the apostles. And uh, Bart says there are six hermeneutical axioms of this apostolic authority. They confirm the authority of the Old Testament. They were the eyewitness, eyewitnesses to the revelation of Christ as the head of the church. They specifically represented the authority of the New Testament. They had direct personal knowledge of Christ as crucified and as risen. And the church must hear them and appropriate the apostolic witness of the New Testament. The church exists in a history of encounter with Scripture. And... Uh, Bart, in note two, we're going to take a look at some of the aspects of this uh, encounter in history with Scripture. And if, first of all, Bart says that we negate any use of Scripture as a legalistic book of law and order to be controlled and to be manipulated. Bart absolutely negated the idea of verbal plenary. He was 100% against the idea of verbal plenary and the idea of manipulating Scripture and using it in a legalistic way. To him, that was the, a perversion of the use of Scripture. We are to infirm the impelling thrust of Scripture in presenting the direction of God's kingdom within the Scriptures. And Bart says there are four apostolic lines which the church should follow and align itself on. There are four apostolic lines of alignment. There is one order, the church's external order, should be open enough to be critiqued and to be influenced by the eschatological direction and the eschatological horizon presented in Scripture. Holy doctrine, doctrine and theology, should continually regard the direction of Scripture in the recognition of Jesus Christ as taught by the apostles. Catholic piety, individual righteousness, must not rely on human reason whatsoever but be maintained by the peace of God in Christ as word as revealed in the scripture. And then finally, apostolic authority of the gospel itself, which should be internalized, practiced, and proclaimed as the good news of the already complete historical objective reconciliation accomplished by God through the Christ event. So Bart is very much centered on the authority of scripture but he's very much against any legalistic manipulation and usage of scripture in a legalistic way. 
he's very much against verbal plenary and that view of scripture. So apostolic authority as mediated through the authority of scripture will lead to the authentic church and the authentic church for Bart is the Advent church. The Advent church or the, the coming of Christ to the church. The church lives in anticipation of the coming of Christ in the form of the Holy Spirit and in an end expectation of the second coming. So block three, we're going to take a look at the Parousia Ecclesia, or the Advent Church. Now here we uh, note that uh, the community exists between the authoritative times of the first and the second Advent. The first and the second Parousia. The first was the 40-day resurrection appearances. And the second is going to be Christ's final coming as judge of the quick and the dead. And currently, Christ is present and coming as the incarnate head of the church, which is internalized within the church community by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, this incarnate parousia of Christ, this incarnate indwelling of the church by Christ, exemplifies a strength and a weakness within the church. Within the church. The strength is fourfold. The believers are awakened. They have the awakening power of the Holy Spirit. They achieve spiritual hearing of the divine verdict of justification. There is a reception and internalization of the verdict. There is reproduction of justification through the proclamation of the gospel. And the only weakness is that this is all by faith and is not yet realized as actualized and as sight. So it's an eschatological point of view of the faith of the believer, not yet in the realm of actualized finite sight. That would be its only weakness. So the Parousia Church eschatologically points to the second coming. Through faith-based spiritual vision of the human situation, which is, uh, according to the believer, looking through the Christ event, a human situation turned back to God as the kingdom of God. And also through the eschatological hope based on Christ's history in the world which has taken up all of human history. So we have an eschatological vision and an eschatological hope based on the Christ event which is the foundation of our eschatological shape of the church. And then note four, the church possesses a teleology, parousia, directed type of existence in four ways. In the four ways of the, uh, of the one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. First, it proceeds from the one fulfillment of hope in Christ's atonement. Two, it anticipates the holy, universal eschaton of peace with God. Three, it is confident in the Catholic, universal, accomplished justification, and for it is concretely visible as the apostolic, provisional representation of the kingdom of God as a witness for all of humanity. The church exists as this concrete experience and witness within finitude as a presentation of the possibility of divine community, of living within the spirit. So it is the one holy Catholic apostolic church that uh, proceeds from hope, anticipates the eschaton, is confident in the already accomplished justification, and is concrete as kingdom, as representation of kingdom. So Professor Bart closes out this particular section, section uh, 62 or paragraph 62 with uh, an additional look at the gathering of the community by the Holy Spirit but it's a gathering as an authoritative gathering within an authoritative time and really Bart starts with the authoritative time the church exists in that in-between time the in-between time of the resurrection and the second coming and that in-between time has already been called by Bart previously realized eschatology. The church lives in the realm of realized eschatology. The kingdom of God is at hand now. 
it is spiritually perceivable and spiritually active in the world now as human history has been taken up within the history of God through the Christ event and is headed toward the eschaton of God's fulfillment of being all in all. And therefore, the church lives in a realized eschatology tension between the resurrection and the second coming, the in-between period. That's a, an authoritative realm of existence. It's an, an authoritative time. Bart says it's the authoritative time. It's the authoritative time of Advent time or parousia time. The church lives in parousia time. That means that we live in the uh, realm of the transcendence of the coming of Christ at any moment. The coming of Christ can enter into any historical situation at any time. We live in expectation of the coming of Christ. We'd, we live in expectation of the advent, the parousia, of the kingdom within our human history. So we live in an authoritative time of the in-between, between the resurrection and the second coming, between the first parousia and the final parousia, the first advent and the final advent. And notice that the first advent being emphasized by Bart is the 40-day appearances after resurrection. That, for Bart, is the first advent that applies to ecclesiology. I mean, obviously we celebrate the first advent as the birth of Christ, as the time of advent, but there are, there's also the advent of Christ entering into ministry after being baptized by John the Baptist. There is the advent of the 40-day uh, appearances, and there is the advent of Pentecost, both Jewish and Gentile. And we now live in an authoritative advent time where we anticipate the coming of Christ in the Holy Spirit as an incarnate, indwelling doxa glory of God. So for Bart, everything is very much dynamic, and even the uh, his high view of Scripture as authority for the church is also dynamic, because for, for Bart, it is not to be used as a verbal plenary document to be manipulated in a legalistic way, but Scripture presents an eschatological horizon, it impels the church toward that eschatological horizon. It teaches the church direction. It teaches the church eschatological direction through the apostolic teachings and through the ap apostolic writings. And that is a more dynamic and more powerful view of Scripture as far as Bard is concerned. It is not to be deteriorated into a view of taking Scripture as legalistic, verbal, plenary manipulation. That is a failed interpretation of the blessedness and the benefit of the authority of Scripture. So the church is the apostolic church through the authority of Scripture as a Scripture that unveils a horizon of the eschaton for the church, and it empowers the, the church for that eschaton through the indwelling, docks the glory of God in the Holy Spirit, and through the teachings of the apostles as presented in the scriptures. So we have excellent final content on the gathering of the community by the power of the Holy Spirit within the historical accomplished objective, complete justification and atonement by God through the Christ event. It gives us a final look at uh, community or the final look at ecclesiology. And uh, our next lesson actually will move into paragraph 63 where Bart will take up the uh, concept of faith and its object. Faith and its object. We'll pick that up starting on page 230.